Hey guys, Henry Man 33 here. It's time to do some very early morning reactions. Um, I tried to go to sleep tonight, but um, I mean, I usually go to bed at around 11 o'clock midnight. It's now 10 minutes to 1 a.m. and I can't sleep yet. So I'm gonna do a few reaction videos and upload them later on in the morning. It's my mom's birthday, so happy birthday to my mom. I know she's not gonna be watching this, but uh, if my mom just so happens to watch this, happy birthday, mom. I love you. Um, try not to kill me for uh, making this public on YouTube. Um, try not to kill me for swearing. And try not to kill my dog because I love dog. And anyways, I'm going to be <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm tired and I'm weird. So anyways, I'm going to be reacting to six pieces of WWE footage. WWE will never release to the public. Oh, well, my mom's definitely not going to watch this. She doesn't like wrestling. Um, by WrestleMania. And it was the link to the original video was in the description. The link to WrestleMania's channel is also in the description. Let's react now. With the Undertaker gone. Baker Batter Lamer? What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Thanks to the prevalence of video footage, wrestling fans have been able to see some famous and infamous moments in wrestling. As fans know, the WWE itself owns miles of video footage. According to a WWE article, the WWE owns a total of more than 125,000 tapes and more than 130,000 hours of footage. How careful does the WWE treat its footage? In addition to WWE's main facility in Stamford, Connecticut, a large portion of the company's tape library is kept at Iron Mountain in New York State's Catskill Mountains. 60,000 wow. assets, including tapes, film reels, and other media are stored in this ultra-protected facility. It's literally a cave you walk into and there's water dripping. To see all of this wrestling footage just sitting there in the middle of a cave and there's this deafening silence is yeah. pretty cool. It's also fire protected. If there's a fire in the building, we have a gas that's released in this room. Foam fills up the room that saves the tape from fire. While there's a good chance the WWE has the footage, that doesn't mean you're ever going to see it. Bear in mind, footage we'll never see implies that there is footage, not a case of no one shot the footage such as Bret Hart beating up Vince McMahon in the Wrestling With Shadows documentary. With that in mind, here is footage we will never see the WWE air ever again. Number 1. The 25th June 2007 episode of Raw If the words Chris Benoit tribute show don't clue you in why this won't air, welcome back from Mars. On the 25th June 2007, the WWE aired a 3 hour tribute to wrestler Chris Benoit, who fans learned had died over the weekend under unknown circumstances. However, as we detailed in our Behind the Titan Tron concerning the Benoit murder suicide, the WWE may have known more than they let on at the time of the show. While the show was a heartfelt remembrance of Benoit by his friends, the WWE did everything they could to banish Benoit's memory from existence once they learned he killed his family. The result is the episode is no longer available on the WWE Network. Instead, the WWE replaced it with a recap of championship bouts from 2007. Number 2. Darren Drozdov's Paralyzing Injury WWE Superstar Droz was injured yeah, in an in-ring accident that? when a running powerbomb by D'Lo Brown went horribly wrong, leaving Darren Drozdov a quadriplegic. The match took place on the 5th October 1999 episode of SmackDown, but the match never aired, and it's unlikely it ever will. However, the aftermath where Droz was taken out of the ring did show up in the WWF's Don't Try This At Home message. Number 3. WWF Over The Edge 1999 yeah. Owen Hart. As most fans know, Owen Hart's accidental fall took place on the 23rd May 1999 Over the Edge pay-per-view where he plunged to his death. While the pay-per-view audience did not see this, as a shot of the Titantron was being shown, it is believed the fans did. And according to some reports, the arena was not totally darkened as popularly believed. It is also believed that the WWF had footage of the accident and it was subpoenaed as part of the wrongful death lawsuit against the WWF. Former WWF announcer Kevin Kelly had this to say in an interview in 2013. His death occurred at an event. Sadly, one of the reasons why Owen Hart remains so fresh in our minds is because he died at a televised event, not in a hotel room. He's not the only wrestler who died at a show, but it sticks with us when we think about that fateful night in Kansas City. 
I still think about the master tapes on the shelf at the WWE video library inside the walls of the TV studio. Instructions, never to destroy, view or duplicate. Number 4. WWF in your house, Wait, beware of dog. Given the sheer number of pay-per-views the WWF ran, it only seemed a question of when they would experience severe technical difficulties. In Your House 8 Beware of Dog gave the term dark match a new meaning when a severe thunderstorm knocked out power during the Caribbean strap match between the ringmaster Steve Austin and Savio Vega. The WWF was able to get power restored just before the main event, but the 26 May 1996 show was a complete loss. The WWF presented a second version of In Your House 8 on the 28th May 1996, airing the matches that made it to air, then redoing the rest of the matches. The WWE is a stickler for professional looking videos, so it seems unlikely we'll ever see the footage that couldn't be broadcast on pay-per-view originally. Number 5. Plane Ride, plane ride from, from Hell Imagine a plane full of wrestlers with access to liquor <coughs> and enough drugs to stock a small pharmacy. That's the Plane Ride from Hell, a 2002 event we covered in an episode of Behind the Titan Tron, so check that one out. The plane ride reportedly included Ric Flair getting lured with flight attendants and Kurt Hennig and Brock Lesnar nearly taking out an emergency exit. According to the website The Lost Media Wiki, a number of paparazzi took pictures of the various oh. hijinks. Amazingly, none of the photos have surfaced. And number 6. Girls Gone Wild WWE Crossover This one seems like every Horndog fan's dream. Who wouldn't want to see their favourite diva showing some skin? When the WWE decided to team up with Girls Gone Wild, the outfit featuring naked girls of questionable age and consent, it seems like a good idea, even though the WWE was steering WWE away from its raunchier Attitude Era sexcapades. This event was a beauty contest of sorts, with Jonathan Coachman and Stacey Keebler co-hosting. A panel of celebrity judges included Tess, Snoop Dogg and Tori Wilson judging the girls but no WWE divas got naked. The event was labelled TVMA, but far from it. Anyone looking for nudity would have better luck playing Leisure Suit Larry. This not so special special hasn't been released by Girls Gone Wild and you can bet it won't be out by the WWE. Pity the poor saps who paid $20 to watch this less than 90 minute debacle. Well guys there you have it, 6 pieces of wrestling footage the WWE will never air again. Did we miss any out? Be sure to leave your comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content. Alright that was a good video. Um, interesting to react to. So thanks for watching. I think there might be a knock at motor. I don't know. Thanks for watching. The original links are in the description. Thanks for watching. I don't know how many times I'm going to say thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Whoops.